When I prepare a video to teach you guys how to have a better memory, I actually find an extreme example, Rebecca. She remember everything since she was 12 days old. But when you ask her, oh my god, how, how does this benefit your life? She will tell you that it is way more a burden than a blast. So many people is making video just like me to teach you how can I build a system, remember everything I learned, everything I read. But before you jump into those tricks and hacks, I wish you can take a look of people who have the ultimate good memories. What happened to their life after these special abilities? Rebecca right now is 31 years old. She was born in Australia. Her first memory is when she was 12 days old. Her parents put her on a car. She is really curious about the steering wheel and the car seat. Her parents took a picture of her. Most people who are watching this video probably don't really remember what happened in your first year's old birthday. But Rebecca exactly remember. She was having a little photo shoot. But back then she did not understand what photo shoot is. All she remember is there is a really strong flash in front of her. And she was dressing a dress that was really uncomfortable. Her parents tried to comfort her with a stuffy toy, but the stuffy toy scared her again. All she wanted to do is cuddle with mothers. When she was younger, she constantly had a dream and she cannot even figure out what is reality and what is, I mean, the dream. When she grew a little older, she is obsessed with Harry Potter. And because her special memory abilities, she can remember word by word what was written on the book. Even then, the whole series is 3 million words. But she didn't realize uh, this is anything special than others. She thought everybody had the same thing, just like her. And when she see report on the TV that, oh, everybody forget what happened before they were four, she just found it's nonsense. The news was horrible made. And slowly, her parents also noticed her special ability. Because frequently, Rebecca will ask her mother some question. When her mother answered, she will get extremely mad at the mother. She will normally say something like this. I'm mad at you because you didn't say the same thing six years ago. And her mom will not even get mad, just find it funny, amusing, that how the heck I can remember something six years ago. Until one day, her mother read about this special brain phenomenon called hyperthermia. And she realized that's what her daughter have. After contact with scientists, in the end, they actually find that this is exactly what she have. Hyperthermia is another name called highly superior autobiographical memories. Basically what it is, is your brain work like a computer and your eye is like a camera. On the back, it automatically remember everything that has happened and observe from yourself. And this process was not even effort like what we do with study. It's actually passive. And when scientists try to figure out what happened with those group of people, they invite people in to the lab and scan their brain. They actually find out that their brain form exactly like how normal people's brain are. Sometimes they have a really strong connection between certain neurons, but that is a result of constant recall memories, but it's not the cause of why they have this. It feels like there is an ultimate switch in your brain, just open an ultimate potential of human being. Until today, uh, scientists still don't know what's the cause of ultimate super memories. And Rebecca is a special case. Her ability seems she born with. But for others, for example, the first ever cases for hyperthermia is actually a woman named Jill Price. She had this supernatural ability after 14 years old birthday. In the beginning, she really liked to do journal to record the beautiful moment of life. But slowly she realized, I don't have to do that no more because I can just precisely remember every single detail of my every single day. 
from Jill's personal story, you will see how much of burden to have that good of memory. She said that my brain every day feels like it's split into half. First half is keep replaying some past memory, and it's so vivid down to the detail, feels like I'm living there right now. Another half of my brain is constantly recording record what just happened. Because our natural brain activity is extremely hard for her to actually focus on a certain thing. When she have a presentation, all she can remember is, for example, in high school, some rebelling teenager telling her some mean thing and some bad comment from others. When she, in the important moment, she just repeat and repeat and repeat the same critical voice in her head. The worst part happened after her husband passed away because she don't have the defense mechanism like most people have. Forget about the painful memory. She keep recording the same sad memory with her husband and it caused her uh, lose sleep and anxiety all the time. But that is not even the worst part. The worst part of this super natural ability is if you don't forget, it's extremely hard for you to learn. And all of them, you will imagine they're really good at study, they're really good at taking tests. But the truth are, all of them are terrible at learning. To figure out the relationship between uh, learning and forget, scientists done complex experiment and they have uh, some really shocking finding. First is when you sleep, your brain is actively almost like pushing a button to start erasing part of your memories. And this ability is not just existing within human, it's even shared with other animals, even down to a, a bug or a fly. And that this ability is almost like a natural selection result. The animal have very good memories will die sooner or later. And our brain even developed these special chemicals. And their job is to erase your memories. The reason why we're not seeing people going to some doctor office to take that chemical out and have ultimate memories is because forgetting is so important for our life. If you cannot forget, you will cause a problem called overfitted. What does it mean? Imagine you survive in the wild in, in 10,000 years ago. Today, you saw a tiger run into you and bet you on the leg. So you start, have super good memory, remember how the tiger looked like. The stripe, the color, the size, the paw. Two months later, when you finally recover, you saw a leopard running from the woods, start coming at you, try to bite you. you Pull out the memory that you have about tiger and to see, hmm, this is not the same thing. So I bet this won't hurt me. You will get bitten and eaten. This is exactly what it means called overfitted. Is you have so many details that you start losing the focus. I understand that lots of people want to have a super ultimate memory because when they study, they have this problem that they always don't have the knowledge when they most need it. For their answer, it's obvious. If I train my memory, become a better and better, I will do better and better. The reality is memory is not directly equal to learning and abilities. For us as a human, by memories, the description of certain concepts, it not necessarily for us to understand it and utilize in futures. Just like the tiger example I told you, you can memorize how tiger look like, but it wouldn't help you to escape from next hazards. After studied about people with ultimate memory, it even start a larve with lots of educator with kids or even adults learning. For lots of kids, they struggle with doing exam. Most of the time, it's not because they didn't do enough repetitions, they didn't do enough recall. Most time is they take the example too literally, like the tigers. And they try to replicate the same thing on the new question that they never encountered before. And it causes problems. And of course, if we learn from one example, that it didn't make us fully understand the principle behind it. 
And when we encounter a new question we cannot solve based on the principle, it called underfitted. Underfitted and overfitted is one of the really popular words in education or cognitive science. But you may surprise what people get inspired to teach our kids. This two term is actually from machine learning. It's how people find what should we train an AI models. And even today, machine learning become a part of cognitive science. And I find just really interesting Easter egg just try to present to you. In the end, I want to present a question to you. Human probably already find the ultimate secret of not forgetting the chemicals. If there's a pill for you, if you take it, you will get all that chemical all of your body and have the ultimate great memory. Would you take it? That's all for today's video. My name is Paul. Thank you very much for sticking to the end. I'll see you next time. Bye.